The latest Microsoft Windows 11 update causes installation failures and system instabilities. OpenAI says the U.S. loses the AI race if copyright is maintained. Will the end of Windows 10 support force charities and not-for-profits to move to Linux? And an AI coding assistant refuses to write code, telling the user to learn to code. Welcome to Hashtag Trending. I'm your host, Jim Love. Let's get into it. Microsoft's recent cumulative update, released as part of the March 2025 Patch Tuesday for Windows 11 version 24H2, has been causing significant issues for users. Reports indicate that the update is failing to install, leading to system crashes and remote desktop protocol, or RDP, connectivity problems. Users attempting to install the update have encountered various error codes. The installation process often stalls at different completion percentages, such as 6%, 20%, or 38%, before failing and reverting changes upon reboot. In some instances, the update has reached 98 or 99% completion, restarts, and then displays a message stating, something didn't go as planned, don't worry, we're uninstalling. Even when the update installs successfully, some users have reported experiencing the blue screen of death errors and issues with RDP sessions disconnecting unexpectedly. According to the blog Windows Latest, these problems have been observed on various hardware configurations, including systems with Intel and Asus motherboards. There are instructions on Microsoft.com for dealing with these issues. A developer using Cursor AI, an AI-powered coding assistant, was surprised when the tool refused to generate code, instead advising him to develop the logic himself. The user, identified as Jan Swist, had used Cursor AI to generate hundreds of lines of code for a racing game. But when he requested further help, the AI responded, I cannot generate code for you, as that would be completing your work. You should develop the logic yourself. This ensures you understand the system and can maintain it properly. Ooh, harsh. This isn't the first time an AI tool has shown reluctance to assist with coding or other tasks. In the past, ChatGPT has also hesitated to generate certain code snippets, citing ethical concerns or potential policy restrictions. However, in this case, other developers using Cursor AI have not reported similar refusals, raising questions about whether this was an isolated incident or a sign of a broader trend. As AI continues to shape software development, the debate over its role intensifies. Should AI remain a tool that assists coding, or should it enforce learning by withholding direct solutions? For now, the answer might depend on the AI and the user's experience. Amazon has announced that effective March 28, 2025, it will discontinue the Do Not Send Voice Recordings feature on select Echo devices, resulting in all voice recordings being processed in the cloud. Previously, certain Echo models allowed users to process voice commands locally, enhancing privacy by keeping recordings on the device. With this change, all voice interactions will be transmitted to Amazon's secure cloud servers for processing, even if users opt to not save these recordings. This shift aligns with the upcoming launch of Alexa Plus, Amazon's next-generation AI assistant, which leverages advanced generative AI capabilities requiring cloud-based processing. Alexa Plus is scheduled to be available in late March, offering enhanced functionality such as document analysis and storytelling, and will be free for Amazon Prime subscribers or per month for non-Prime users. Amazon's handling of voice recordings from Alexa-enabled devices has raised significant privacy concerns, particularly regarding data management and employee access. In 2019, reports revealed that Amazon employees regularly listened to voice recordings captured by Echo devices. This practice aimed to improve Alexa's speech recognition capabilities, but involved extensive human review. In 2023, the Federal Trade Commission reported that tens of thousands of Amazon employees had access to Alexa's users' voice recordings. The FTC criticized Amazon for inadequate access controls, allowing unnecessary employee access to sensitive data. 
These practices have led to some legal challenges. In October 2024, Amazon sought to dismiss a lawsuit alleging that Alexa illegally recorded private conversations without consent. The plaintiffs claimed that Alexa devices intercepted conversation beyond intended commands, raising significant privacy issues. Users concerned about privacy settings can take some steps to manage their data. You can review privacy settings and limit data retention and usage. You can disable human review, opting out of settings that allow Amazon employees to review voice recordings. But aside from that, you just have to trust that Amazon will respect your privacy and not make any mistakes that could release your data. And we all know how secure AI systems are. We're going to have to trust Alexa to be able to help us with that. OpenAI has cautioned the U.S. government that restrictive copyright policies could hinder America's leadership in artificial intelligence and potentially allow China to overtake the U.S. in this critical area. The company emphasizes that the current copyright laws may impede AI development by limiting access to necessary training data. Training AI models requires vast amounts of data, often sourced from copyrighted material. OpenAI argues that without the ability to utilize this data under fair use provisions, U.S. AI companies could face significant obstacles. In contrast, Chinese AI developers reportedly have fewer restrictions, granting them broader access to data and potentially accelerating their technological advancements. OpenAI underscores the national security stakes, asserting that if U.S. companies are constrained by stringent copyright laws while Chinese firms operate with fewer limitations, the U.S. risks losing its competitive edge in AI. The company has urged the U.S. government to adapt copyright policies to support AI innovation, thereby maintaining national security and technology leadership. OpenAI is recommending clarifying fair use to explicitly permit AI training on publicly available data, including copyrighted material. Introducing exceptions that allow AI developers to mine data without infringing on copyright laws and balancing creator rights and innovation by developing policies that protect the rights of content creators while not stifling technological progress. According to OpenAI, these measures would aim to create a legal environment conducive to AI advancement, ensuring that U.S. companies can compete effectively on the global stage. Now, the urgency of OpenAI's appeal is heightened by China's rapid AI development. Chinese companies like DeepSeek are making significant strides, offering advanced AI models at lower costs. OpenAI warns that without supportive policies, the U.S. could lose its AI leadership to China with far-reaching economic and strategic consequences. Now, a more cynical person might suspect that why all the tech bros suddenly moved to be supporters of Trump, making big donations and changing their policies, might have something to do with AI and the lawsuits that have emerged under copyright. That could be just being too cynical. Nevertheless, even the most objective of us would have to say that if we were now to bet on who would win in Donald Trump's America, mega donors like Musk and Zuckerberg, who have big AI copyright liabilities, and considering the U.S. could be beaten by China if copyright is not changed, is anybody out there going to say that the Trump administration will favor authors and what he calls the media? What's that? Oh, fake news? Windows 10 will cease receiving security updates after October 2025, and this means that charities and nonprofit organizations are going to face some critical decisions regarding their computer infrastructures. In the past, updates to operating systems and even software packages were not as big an issue for not-for-profits and charities. They could often get free or cheap licenses. But this time, new hardware will be required and a lot of these groups depend on donated hardware. Many refurbished computers essential for these organizations don't meet the stringent hardware requirements of Windows 11. Microsoft's hardware specifications for Windows 11 exclude numerous processors from 2017 and earlier, rendering many functional computers incompatible. And even existing hardware, the transition from Windows 10 to Windows 11 is not straightforward for many charities and not-for-profits. 
This situation presents charities with three primary options. They can continue using Windows 10, but post October 2025, this choice would expose organizations to security vulnerabilities due to a lack of updates. Chester Winsniewski, Director and Global Field Chief Information Security Officer at Sophos, emphasizes the dangers. Deploying Windows 10 at this time is a bad idea. These will actively be turned into digital weapons by criminals and nation states alike, and Windows 10 users will be somewhat defenseless against them. This perspective underscores the urgency for charities to seek secure alternatives to safeguard their operations and beneficiaries. They could invest in new hardware, but purchasing new compatible devices entails significant financial burdens, often beyond the means of nonprofits, and this will be even more difficult if tariffs raise prices on new machines. Or they can adopt alternative operating systems. Transitioning to Linux-based systems offers a cost-effective and secure solution, albeit with considerations regarding user familiarity and software compatibility. PCs for People, a prominent U.S. nonprofit computer refurbisher, has proactively addressed this challenge. The organization decided to discontinue deploying Windows 10 on incompatible hardware a year ahead of the support cutoff. Instead, they have embraced Linux Mint, a user-friendly Linux distribution for 6th and 7th generation computers. This strategic move ensures the continued usability of refurbished machines without incurring additional costs or compromising security. Linux distributions such as Linux Mint present a compelling alternative for charities. They offer cost effectiveness, security, and performance. Linux can run efficiently on older hardware, extending the lifespan of devices. So while some maintain that transitioning to Linux is going to require a lot of user training and potential software compatibility issues, for the bulk of regular users who need email, an office suite, and a browser, this is no longer an issue. Full disclosure, we stopped buying Microsoft 365 and shifted to a free open source model with no issues at all. And 90% of the rest of the apps we use are browser-based anyway. No doubt there will be some reasons for not-for-profits and charities to require Windows 11, but for most others, Linux emerges as a viable solution balancing cost, security, and functionality. By embracing open source alternatives, not-for-profits can continue their vital work without incurring prohibitive expenses or compromising on security. And if anybody's ever installed Windows and tried to maintain it, don't worry about what it takes to install Linux. And that's our show for today. Thanks to all of you that have supported our recent fundraising. We can get through this month and the start of a monthly revenue stream is small, but it's there. I hope we can grow it. Fundraising will stay open at buymeacoffee.com slash tech podcast. And for our listeners in the northern part of our North American audience, we saw the first Robin yesterday. And for us, that means six more weeks of mud but spring is definitely in the air. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a marvelous Monday.